Pizza Flix presents Classic Movie Monday. In this daring expose from Chesterfield Pictures, it's gangsters versus G-men in a battle for the fate of runaway girls. Story and screenplay by crime scribe Martin Mooney, best remembered for the film noir classic Detour. and she ain't home yet. But, George, Anne works so hard all day, she should have a little recreation. She's not going to gallivant around with that Dixon boy. Is that clear? That Dixon boy is all right, and you know it. Besides, Anne never stays out very late. Yeah. Hello. Where were you? I told you I was going to the movies. You weren't alone, were you? No. Out with that Dixon boy again, huh? George! I don't know what you expect of me, Dad. I slave all day behind that counter, and at night, surely... I expect obedience. Do you understand? No. I'll knock that impudence out of you. <laughs> now, maybe you'll understand, you two. I'm running this house. Hello, Miss Reeves. This is Ann Jason. You told me to call again about that job. Phil, this morning... Oh, I'm sorry. I was hoping that... Well, thanks, anyhow. Oh, so you're holding him. Thanks, Inspector. I was sure I was right about him. Oh, of course, the society will prosecute. Goodbye. But, dear, you shouldn't have left home and come here without a job in sight. I just had to get away. How much money have you? Well, about ten dollars. That isn't enough. Look, dear, you must go back home. No. No, I couldn't go back and face them all. Honey, tell me, why did you leave? Well... 
You see, Joe, my sweetheart, married another girl. And I... I understand. Well, you keep in touch with me every day. I'm sure I can find employment for you. Oh, thank you, Miss Benson. I'll do that. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. your story. Oh, thanks, darling. Having a newspaper man for a sweetheart has his advantages. <laughs> no trouble at all, Doc. I called on his honor. He had nothing to say. So all I had to do was put the words in his mouth. Maybe I'm going to marry a ventriloquist. Sure, so I can always have you sitting on my knee. Oh, so you're going to make a dummy out of me. Uh-uh, now you got me. Consider the subject changed. <laughs> How's Dad? Swell. Well, I'll see you tonight at 8. All right, honey, so long. Goodbye, dear. Good morning, girl. Is there anything I can do for you? Oh, uh, do sit down. Good evening, Senator. Oh, hello, Jimmy. Hello, darling. Hello, dear. Say, I've got some great news for you. What? I sold the editor the idea of my doing a series called Missing Girls. Now, that certainly ought to help your Traveler's Aid Society, dear. It's marvelous. It's a pity people don't realize how much we have to do with such little money. Well, of course, Senator, I'm not going to pull my punches in these articles. If it's going to be more effective, that's the only way to do it. I told him I could interview a lot of the girls who come to you for aid and tell their real human interest stories. Might do a world of good. My boy, I certainly wish you could do as much for my bill to tax gambling. Well, I wish I could, Senator, but the editor doesn't like it. He thinks it's too revolutionary. But does that mean your paper won't cover my address at the auditorium tonight? Oh, sure. no. Our political report will be right on the job, Senator. Oh, fine. You see, dear, what I had in mind was this. We could take a couple of the girls out to lunch. Every year, billions of dollars are wagered by the American people. Now, since we've been unable to regulate morals, I propose to legalize and then to tax this fabulous revenue. If my bill becomes a law, it will mean the elimination of sales tax on necessities. Gee, Dad's doing all right. Yes, well. It means smaller income taxes, lower real estate taxes, and better hospitals here than abroad. And what is more important, it will mean the death of this octopus, the racketeer. Don't let it get under your skin, Dan. I thought that guy was just a chump. Well, what makes you change your mind? He's plenty smart. He's got a real idea there. That applause sounds like our exit march. Well, what are you going to do about it? I don't know, but I'll find a way to stop him. They tell me that my measure is an open challenge to gangland. I expect that sinister interests with plenty of money for propaganda will lobby against the Benson bill. That's why I'm taking my fight direct to you. Kid got a bad deal. How long have you been in town? Six months. And this month tells her that he's head booker for Radio City. Well, at first it seemed very nice. Where'd he come from? I don't know. He slipped to that old spiel about him being a thoroughbred. That's right. He did say he was bred in Kentucky. Well, he may have been bred in Kentucky, but in this town he's just the crumb. And the crest of a guy. You ought to hear him broadcast. You'd think he was a network. Well, come on. We'll see what we can do about it.
Hey, beginning Monday, his salary is out. You mean we're going to have to get along on just our tips? That's what I mean. Oh, but Mr. Rinelli, we can hardly get by now. Take it or leave it. I can have a hundred girls here in the morning who'll be glad to work for tips. It's not dope. And they close every betting joint in town. Kind of tough on Dan Collins running all them spots. Collins was lucky to beat that murder rap. Yeah. Especially since everyone knew there was plenty of bad blood between him and Mac. Collins was an awful chump to have Joe bumped off. He might have known they'd close every book on him. Collins never knew nothing about that killing. What do you mean? Well, you know me and Dan's been sour ever since I got out of stir. Yeah, but uh, I never knew what it was all about. What split you guys? Remember when I got out of Joliet? Yeah. I took that rap for Collins. I came out without a dime. I tried to touch him for two grand, and he gave me the runaround. I swore I'd get even. Then you knew all about Joe Mac being ripped off. Did you feel that way about Collins? Why don't you write his name on a slug? Oh, no. That too quick. Did you ever see a cat play with a mouse? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's me and Collins. Next time I pull a job, I'll make sure he has no alibi. So you didn't have to see the D.A. today on that Mac case? No, I guess I'm washed up with that. You're sure lucky, Dan. Jimmy, somebody's trying to cross me up. What do you mean? Whoever killed Joe Mac tried to make it appear as if I was responsible. Any idea who it could be? No. Naturally, I've made lots of enemies. You have to when you're in the rackets. But murder isn't in my line. Oh, by the way, the Zippo called me up last night. What did he want? Well, he's plenty burned up about those articles you're writing. Well, he's got no squawk. I described that shrimp as a giant, six foot three and weighing over 200 pounds. <laughs> yeah? Oh, hello, Tony. Well, how many stones has he got? Well, if they're that big, I'll have to cut them up into wedding rings or something. Well, quote him 2,200 and call me back. Okay. I didn't know you were in the ice business, too, Dan. Oh, occasionally, when things get hot. When do you expect to reopen the pool rooms? After election. Maybe. You started to tell me about Shorty. What's his beef? Well, I'm afraid those articles of yours will get him dragged up in front of the grand jury. He's crazy. I'm not going to finger the guy. Well, I told him you had to make your coffee and cakes as well as the next guy, but he couldn't see it that way. You know, if that Benson bill goes through, a lot of you guys are going to be looking for jobs. Yeah, that's another thing I want to talk to you about. Meaning the senator? Yeah, does that intended father-in-law of yours mean to go through with that bill? I suppose so. Jimmy, if you're as smart a guy as I think you are, you'll kind of coax him to lay off. It's a waste of time to talk to the senator. He usually does his own thinking. Now, yeah, people are beginning to believe that, hoy. We've got to put a stop to it. Well, Dan, I've got to run along. Got to write another article on missing girls. <laughs> Have your fun while you can, kid. Because from what I hear, the DA is going to put a stop to those articles any time now. How? You'll find out. <laughs> well, I hope there's a story in it. So long, dear. So long. Since you refuse to accept transportation back home, I suppose I'll have to see what I can do for you in the way of a job. Oh, thank you, Miss Benson. Have you ever had any experience with housework? Oh, lots of it. I've helped my mother ever since I was six years old. You call me back at four this afternoon. I think I'll have good news for you. Oh, thank you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, what a beautiful home. Gee, Miss Benson, I never dreamed I'd be lucky enough to work for you. I think you'll like it, Anne. There's only Dad and I in the family, so you and the cook will practically have the house to yourself. Oh, I know I'm going to love it. Oh, come on, dear, and I'll show you to your room.
Jimmy, for a newspaper man, you're certainly him on the dance floor. <laughs> the result of a misspent use, honey. But speaking of being at home, do you remember that little model house we saw last week? Uh-huh. What about it? You liked it, didn't you? Oh, it was a little dream castle. Well, darling, I've got a surprise for you. Oh, Jimmy, it's beautiful. Well, it ought to be. Billy Smith designed it for me. You? Where do I come in? Right through that lovely front door. Now all we need is a lot. <laughs> That's right, a lot of everything. And the world is ours. Uh, pardon the intrusion, Dugan. But that's a subpoena for you to appear before the grand jury. What's it for? The DA is finding your missing girls in his hair. Oh, Jimmy, I'm sorry. It's all my fault. Nonsense. It's all on the day's work. Come on, let's dance. What has our eminent district attorney got to say this bright morning? Plenty. What are you trying to do, Dugan? Run me out of office? Well, I'll take it easy. I got a job to look after the same as you have. These articles make very interesting reading. But are you prepared to go into court and substantiate statements you have made? I'm not going to squeal on the people who gave me the information, if that's what you mean. That's exactly what I mean. Over 5,000 letters have come in condemning my office since you started writing these stories. Yeah, read that. Just what are you getting at? The foreman of the grand jury is a hound for publicity. If you say these articles are based on facts and don't come across with names and addresses... I'll be sentenced for contempt. Yes, and you'll get the limit, too. But on the other hand, if I say it's all the figment of a weird imagination... Oh, I see. You know all the answers, huh? You know, if these letters had been sent to my editor instead of you, I'd get a raise. Hey, that's not a bad idea. I think I'll talk to him about it. So long, D.A. Hey, wait, wait. Riley, here's my ticket. When's the show start? They'll get to you in a few minutes, Jimmy. It's all kidding aside, Riley. What do you think they got cooked up for me in there? Well, my lad, I never knew one of these things to be good news yet. Mm -hmm. I got a swell choice, haven't I? What do you mean, son? Well, if I commit perjury, I'm out in two minutes. And if you don't? Then it's jail or the morgue. You're sure in a spot. It's like playing poker without the face cards. <laughs> oh, hello, Jimmy. Come on in. Tell the warden I don't like spinach, will you? And gentlemen, I'm sure that Mr. Du... In the articles which you've identified as having been written by you, in that the series now appearing in the news is an inside story. Now, will you explain to the grand jury just how and where you gathered your information? My editor gave me $500, told me to disappear for 10 days and file a daily article on missing girls. Uh, what we mean, Mr. Dugan, is who told you these things printed in the paper? Now, isn't it possible that though you wrote these articles in all sincerity... Mr. District Attorney, I object to your asking the witness any leading questions. Every paragraph appearing in those articles is the result of first-hand information. I actually lived with hoodlums for about two weeks. None of it is fiction nor hearsay. No, but, no, but, what seems to be the trouble, Mr. District Attorney? Are you ill? <laughs> <laughs> I resent your sarcasm, Mr. Foreman. You don't need me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dugan, in your fourth article, you stated that you frequented a luxurious penthouse where 24 girls were forced to pay tribute to a man whom you described as Husky Brown. Now, where is this penthouse located? I'm sorry, sir, I refuse to answer this. On the unwritten law of the press that the source of news is absolutely confidential. <laughs> a bunch of us were in a joint one night when it was raided. Well, how does it come, Mr. Dugan, that you were not bailed out? Well, my bondsman was arrested for hitting a cop and was held uptown. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dugan, do you know this uh, Shorty Zippo's occupation? No, sir, I don't. Hasn't he ever told you how he earned his livelihood? Well, doesn't he as a retired bookmaker? I believe that's correct. Well, didn't that seem strange to you? No. If he had posed as a retired horse player, it would have seemed strange to me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Dogan, am I to assume by your attitude that you absolutely refuse to reveal the names and addresses of the persons described in your articles? Your assumption is correct. And are you prepared to pay the penalty for that refusal? I am. Oh. I see. And that's the way it ended. Darling, do you mean they're really going to put you in jail? Well, that's what they threatened to do. My boy, I'm proud of you. It would have been comparatively easy to have avoided all this if you had less character. Well, thank you, Senator. It's very nice of you to say so. But you haven't done anything. I know, honey, but sometimes you can go to jail for things you don't do. Are these the same questions Mr. Dugan refused to answer before the grand jury? Yes, Your Honor. And uh, may I remind the court that there is absolutely no legal basis in this state which would justify Mr. Dugan's, uh, shall I say, uh, strange attitude in a matter of such importance. Do you want 24 hours in which to think this matter over? No, sir. My attitude in this question will always be the same. And you refuse to answer any of these questions? I believe that a newspaper man who squeals on a confident is not worthy of covering a story. Then you leave me no alternative. I fine you $250. And sentence you to 30 days in city prison. Well, young man, ready to go to work? Yes, Warden. We've got a lot of bad actors in this place. How'd you like to be assigned to the hospital? Sort of rescue. I'd rather not take any favors, thanks. You mean you want to do it the hard way? I guess that's the idea. Then I'll have to send you to the kitchen. And I'm warning you, it's a bad spot. But as long as you're asking for it. Coffee's a little better in there, but there's a tough click. I think that'll be fine. Thanks, Warden. Take him to Harry. Let him help Dominic. Yes, sir. How long are you in for, Dominic? I got the in death. One to three years. What'd you do? Nothing. Seems like most of the guys in this jail did nothing. I was grabbed for packing a gun. Oh, that's your idea of doing nothing. The judge says to me, what do you got the gun for? And when I tells him to shoot rabbits, he ups and throws the book at me. But you don't shoot rabbits with a revolver. Brother, I shoot everything with a revolver. The major was asking for. Oh. <laughs> I hope they're well done. You better eat them while they're hot. I promised them the middle of the guy I bunk with. Hey, you better be careful. If you're caught, it means solitary. For how long? Maybe for the rest of your bit. We had a guy here last year that spent 47 days in the binge. How about a cup of coffee, Harry? Help yourself and look out for the deputy. Say, by the way, meet Jimmy Dugan, Frank Jackson, our plumber. Glad to know you. Glad to know you. Hi, Anything Frank. you want to know about this little hotel of ours, just ask me. Well, thanks, Frank. You guys have all been swell. Say, we know you're the first guy to make this place in a long while that we can trust. How about a Dominic? Hi. Good boy. Is everything all right? Yeah. What's the idea of the briefcase? No, oh, just a couple for Roscoe. We going right after the house? Of course. What makes you think we can get in? I had some cards printed. A W Brick Brickerton. Brickerton, Brickerton. Oh. A twenty at law, Los Angeles, California. That'll get us in. Now, what about Dan Collins? Oh, I tailed him all day. And say, you were right about that society, Mama. She's fallen for him, huh? Like a ton of bricks. And he's taking her for a ride in the country tonight. Perfect. Let him prove an alibi this time. And if he tries to drag that ritzy Mama into it, they'll throw him in the bug house. Maybe she'll come to the front for him. And blow five million dollars if a husband gets wise? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. 
You know, the moment I found out you were the notorious Dan Collins, I was so thrilled. <laughs> well, I hope we'll get to know each other better before the evening's over. It must be marvelous to lead such a hectic life. Yes, it is. Any particular place you want to go? Oh, I'd just like to go down to the beach. And? Sit in the sand. Okay by me. I guess you're a little jittery about being seen in public, huh? Oh, naturally. After all, I have a husband. Oh, how nice you look, Miss Denson. Thank you, Lamb. By the way, if anyone should call, just say I've gone out with Dan, then I'll call him back when I get home. All right, I'll tell him. The car's ready, Miss Dorothy. Be right out, Larry. Ready yet, Dad? I'll be right with you, honey. We'll see who that is, Ann. I'd like to see Senator Benson. I'll see if he's in. Thank you. Two gentlemen to see Mr. Benson. Oh, tell them that... No, you better have them come in. Come in, please. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, Dad, Mr. Brickerton from the coast is here. Oh, all right, dear. How do you do, sir? Dad! Oh, Miss Benson, what's happened? Get a doctor and the police! Oh, Dad. Are you all right? I'm all right, honey. Who were they? Tell Larry to follow those men. Don't you know who they were? I don't know. Oh, Mr. Harvey, what happened? Mamie, help me with it. Let's put him on the couch. That's right. That's right. Senator Benson's house. Mamie, don't leave him. I'll be right back. The doctor's on his way. Well, there they go. We'll have to follow them ourselves. No. We lose them when we turn off. We're getting too close. Better slow down. Collins, you had every reason to kill Benson. I've told you a hundred times I don't know anything about it. You haven't accounted for your time between 8 o'clock and midnight. The senator was killed at 9. Listen, you can't make me cop a plea for a job somebody else did. Funny, you always had an alibi before. Yeah, I got one now, too. The chauffeur didn't identify me, did he? Well, he wasn't sure whether you were one of them or not. I suppose you still claim that this is a frame-up. It is a frame-up. You didn't like the senator's bill. Might have spoiled your racket, wouldn't it? If it became a law, yes. Mm -hmm. How about telling us what become of Benson's daughter and the maid? I don't know what you're talking about, I tell you. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah? I see where they knocked off that politician you was talking about last night. Who? Oh. The senator. What's the matter, kid? All right, Warden. Empty your pockets. Thank you. 
keep the comb and the cigarettes. Thanks. Um, and Hundred and sixty seven, that right? Right. You're allowed five. There's your receipt. Upper tier. Five thirty one. Okay. If your alibi is any up and up, I don't see why you got any worries. Trouble is, we can't find the woman I was with. That's bad. If she really took it on a lamb, you'll be facing a murder rap. Hey, will you lay off that scraping? Bothers your teeth, huh? Give me the creeps. Hey, what's that knife for, anyway? We got a line on the front office guy, and I drew the ticket. Oh, they have stoolies in here, too, huh? Lots of them. There are pigeons in every jail. Only we stop them before they do much singing. Put that thing away, will you? All right, pal. Only you better produce that woman, or the boys downstairs may be cutting cars to slip you to business. What do you mean? This guy Dugan's got a lot of friends downstairs, and if they thought that you knocked off the senator and lifted the girl, well, I'd hate to be in your spot. How can I talk to Dugan? You can't. He works in the kitchen. I could explain everything to him. The only one who'll talk you out of this is that woman. I gotta talk to Dugan right away, I tell you. I've got to. Your only chance is Sunday morning on the church line. You gotta talk fast. You can't get across much gab. The guards watch is pretty close. Mm, I see. Why don't you try and get some sleep, kid? You can't keep this up all night. I can't sleep. I'm going screwy. Jimmy, Jimmy, you got three more days on a wake up. Three days? It might as well be three years. Oh, if I could only stop thinking. I know how helpless you feel, kid, but if you don't keep quiet, you're going to lose your good time. And every hour seems like a month. Even if the governor slips you apart in the red tape, it takes three days. I gotta get out of here. Jimmy, there's nothing you can do to help find that girl. The feds are handling it all right. Yeah, but it's not knowing whether she's alive or dead that's getting me. Jimmy, why don't you lay down? Get some sleep. Get the girl off your mind. Oh, I gotta call a guard. I gotta get out of here. Guard! Guard! Jimmy! If a guard sees you in this condition, it'll mean another five days. I don't care. Guard! Hey, guard! Get on that second tier. Cut it out. Somebody's gonna make solitaire. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. I gotta get out of here. I can't... Didn't I tell you to keep quiet? Sorry, Tim. Guess I was having a nightmare. Come on. You can finish it in solitary. Hiya, Whitey. Hello, Chuck. How's it feel to be sitting in the boss's chair? <laughs> I'd rather be in his chair than in his shoes right now. No news on that society mama that Dan was with, huh? No. But Joe and Tony have got the whole mob scouring the town for her. I've got him reporting to me every 10 minutes. Well, if she grabs a boat and goes to Europe, Dan will be in a fine spot. Oh, well, we're all washed up anyhow. Washed up? What do you mean? The Benson bill was reported out of committee yesterday, and it's a cinch to pass. Mm. What's Dan going to do, buy a farm? <laughs> What's worrying me is what we're going to do. Well, maybe we'll have to be chumps again, get a job. That would be tough. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hello, Joe. Yeah. Yeah? Swell. <laughs> no, no, no. Not that. I, listen, all we want from her is an affidavit for the DA. Uh-huh. Good boy. Okay. <laughs> I'll wait right here. <laughs> they got her. And just in time, too. Where'd they pick her up? At the steamship office. She was just booking passage on the Antonia. Great. Are <laughs> you telling me? Where's your receipt? Oh, 
How many times have you been in here, Dan? Oh, eight or ten times, I should say. Only for a day or two. Well, lucky you had an alibi this time. Yeah. I heard they were going to gang up on me in here. Yes, we were thinking about transferring you to another jail this morning. If that woman hadn't come through. <laughs> well, so long, Warden. You'll never see me in here again. Where'd you get that idea? I'm through. That's what they all say. On the way out. Here's the check, Dan. For 900 bucks. What's this for? From the second hand man who bought all your stuff. Oh, when's he going to take it out of here? He said his men would be up tomorrow and clean us out. Well, that's that. Well, where do we go from here? Nowhere. I'm through. Dan, I got a guy waiting outside who's got a big proposition. Do you want to see him? I don't want any more rackets. From now on, I'm going to stand on the sidelines and watch the parade go by. But this means quick dough. How long do you think 200 grand's going to last you? I'll invest it in gilt-edged stuff. It'll bring me all I want. Oh, what do you know about investing? You know what you're liable to do? Wind up with a lot of wallpaper. Oh, Whitey, if you're not interested, I have another appointment. Come in. I want you to meet SOS. This is the guy I was telling you about. Very happy to know you, Mr. Collins. How are you? Where'd you get a moniker like that? <laughs> well, my name is Sidney Osmond Salmon. In gambling, I always use the initials, and it's uh, <laughs> sort of stuck. Well, anyway, you're not superstitious. What's your proposition, and how much? Mr. Collins, you've heard of various ways of beating the races. <laughs> yeah. There's only one way I know of. That's taking the bets. That's where you're wrong. With a little financial aid, I can put all bookmakers out of business. <laughs> What's your idea? Cut the antlers off reindeer and run them as ringers? Now, listen, Dan. <laughs> Maybe I better explain this proposition. You see, SOS for years has been trying to put speed in slow horses, and now he's got it. There it is. Good morning, sir. Say, can't you do that some other time, Pokey? Superintendent's orders. New tenant moving in tomorrow. Well, what's the magic about this? I tell you, this will make money for us as fast as the mint. Well, what's it all about? Come on, I'll show you. Wait a minute. Let me try it. Where's the hop? <laughs> There's a little trick to it. Lordy! The child in the electric chair! I told you, Dan, it works perfectly. I feel like a new man. I merely press a concealed button and a load of juice runs through the whip. No wires, nothing. Looks pretty good. What do you expect from me? Finances for ten grand, and we're in business. Well, at least I got a demonstration on a horse before I part with my jack. Okay, we'll try it on a dog this afternoon. Say, how about that, that mule of Jerry's? You mean Dodo? Yeah, run out of the money 42 times. Now, if this whip can make that pig win a race, the deal's on, okay? Mr. Collins, I assure you this little gadget of mine is infallible. Well, boys, I'm in the rackets again. I knew you wouldn't quit. <laughs> Listen, will you do me a favor? Sure. Tell us Dugan, the newspaper guy, to stick around by that dentist chair. We'll be down to see him. Got something to tell him. Okay. Thanks, pal. Hey. There's nothing wrong with my teeth. Who said there was? Mine are all right, too. All oh, right. Well, we've gone down to the dentist for. Now, listen, you know that dentist does no filling. All he does is yank him out. Hey, how are you going to get by that? All right, so we lose them all or a piece. Oh, you don't have the most foolish ideas. This is the only way we'll get to see this guy. If we get to the chair, you and I ain't going to miss a couple of teeth. Are you sure that the feds have got that 2500 reward for Davis and Wilson? Certainly. All right. How are we going to get the dough? Listen, dumbbell. This Dugan's the right guy. There's a big story in this. And that's all he cares about. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Dugan gets a reward, kicks it back to us, and when we go to trial, we get ourselves a big-time mouthpiece, and we get out of here. 
That's what I was going to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, kid, you better go up to the hospital and have those things fixed up. Oh, that'll be all right. I'll be out of here soon. The last two days will drag like they was weeks. Hi, gang. Hello, Willie. What's on the grapevine today? What, what do you mean? The way of news or speculation? What do you think? Well, I know that to win in the fifth, I got it straight. Dodo? Yeah. The fellow have to have a lot of courage to play a dog like that. Say, Jimmy, here's something that'll interest you. Bill, just became a law ten minutes ago. That's swell. Boy, that Senate sure jammed it through. Think of it. 342 to 12. <laughs> now we'll get the full mutual odds with no Welchon. Oh, say, I almost forgot. Those two guys in 514 want to talk to you. They said to hang around the dentist chair. Okay, where is the dentist chair? He uses the barber chair every Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah. What are those guys in for in 514? Murder. They're supposed to have shot that guy in a movie house last week. Say, what's this I've been hearing about hot apple pie? Yep, I baked two of them. One of them we cut up. But the gate guard grabbed the other. What's the idea? Taking him home to his wife, I guess, to show her how good us cons can cook. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, gentlemen, that'll give me a chance to get a little practice at my old profession. <laughs> hey, check. Yeah. Can you call it? When I clipped you yesterday, what was it? Let me see. Heads. That's right. Heads again. Thanks. Does he ever win? Never. Whenever he gets a nickel for a good shave, he can't resist the urge to gamble, and he always loses. <laughs> you and the wife better come over for supper tonight. Sure. I'll call up Pete and we'll play a little rummy. Hey, what's my chances of getting off the paint game? Now let me see, what are you doing, a sixer? Yeah, with my good term, I'll be out in October. Well, that's when you get off the paint gig. Thanks. You know that cook makes the best pie crust I ever ate? Well, he ought to. He was assistant chef in one of the biggest hotels in town. Yeah, I can taste that pie now. Well, you sure got a keen taste. Huh? Look. Guess we got a few crooks in this place. Well, I'm not going to let him get away with it. Why don't you squawk to the warden? I'll find it. Ah, oh, you're wasting your time, Joe. That pie ain't in one piece no more. <laughs> I guess you're right. <laughs> uh, Marty, you sure can take it. Oh, doctor. Water? Oh, doc. hey. doctor. Oh, doctor. Oh, doctor. 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 Oh, ah, You want to see me? Yeah, listen. Well, I'd like to believe it, Nick, but you haven't offered much proof. Proof? That Davis wanted to zig here to do that Benson job. Would have made that proof enough? Oh. Oh. Come on. Get out oh. of the chair. Oh. Nick? <clears throat> Everything he's been telling you is on the yacht and not. Uh, doctor, it's the uh, the second one on the bottom has been talking back to me. Looks pretty sound, but if you want it out, that's what these pinchers are for. Open up here. Come on. Okay, I'll do it. But how am I going to find old Eddie Bolton's hideout? It's about five miles from Sanibel. Well, that's not very definite. It's a farmhouse. And there's a pigeon coop on the barn. Carrier pigeons, huh? Yeah, that's how they keep in touch with Sandoval. Okay. All right. Well, Jimmy, I suppose it's wrong, but gee, we sure hate to see you leave. I'm gonna miss some of you guys, but I got a lot of work ahead of me. Can I have that box? The wolves will be here the minute you leave. Sure. Oh, yeah, and give this pen to old man Jones, will you? I promised it to him. Sure. Oh, yeah. Here's a couple of bucks for old Wazzy the barber. Oh, <laughs> you get a kick out of that. 
40 nickels to lose. Yeah, if Willie doesn't go south with it. I, hey, after all the jack I won on Dodo, sir, I ought to resent that. Jimmy, it sure was nice of you to fix the boys up in the flats. Why, what you do, Jim? Nothing much. He told the commissary to slip every trusty ten packs of butts. Gee, who oh, say? I almost forgot. Here. What's this? It's from Nick upstairs. He said you'd be expecting it. Marino, Kelsey, Wilder, Jackson, Gentleman, and Dugan. Out you go, Jimmy. Well, so long, fellas. Come up and see me when you get out. Maybe I can help you get a job. Gee, thanks. Yes, I'll hear from Washington by three o'clock. Phillips, you just get in touch with me. Thanks, Dave. Well, Jimmy, hello. <laughs> How are you, Ray? <laughs> so, the hedge and the jug, huh? Yeah. <laughs> How was it? Oh, it could have been worse. <laughs> you know, we all got a great kick out of the whole affair. Ray, I've got something I think might interest you. Yeah? What? Did you ever hear of a couple of guys named Ben Davis and Harry Wilson? Why, of course. There's the reward out for both of them. Could you assign somebody to go with me? You mean you know where these two fellows are? I think so. And the only promise I made was to turn over the reward money to a couple of guys in jail. I'll back you up on any promise that you've made. My information's pretty definite on one point, but a little vague in another way. Definite as to what? As to where Davis and Wilson hide out. But a little vague as to the exact location of the cooling off spot. However, I think in a day or so I could locate the place. Well, who do you want? Your old pal, Gil Martin? Uh, yeah, he'd be swell. Send in Ralph Gil Martin. Here's a map the kids in jail gave me. Davis and Wilson are supposed to be hiding out in a place run by an old witch called Ma Bolton. Jimmy, if this information is authentic, you've accomplished a great deal by going to jail. Do you know this Bolton woman? She's been on our fugitive list for months. Centerville is not in my district, but we've got a field station right near there. Ralph can get some boys up there if this lead of yours stands up. Hello, Jimmy. How are you, Ralph? I'm in to run over to the jail to see you. But the boss here kept me stepping in too fast to clip. Well, I had plenty of company. <laughs> Ralph? Jimmy's got an idea that he knows where we can pick up Mob Bolton, Ben Davis, and Harry Wilson. Say, that is big news. Now you take a plane. Report to Johnny Keith in Office 37. You ought to make it by dinner time. Ray, I don't need your men to walk into a hornet's nest. So if you'll give me time to check this thing, I'll appreciate it. Now you run along with Ralph. And anything you two decide is all right with me. But listen, don't take any chances with this mob. They're dynamite. Good luck and be careful. Thanks, Ray. Come on, Ralph. You guys pulled an awful bloomer bringing those girls here. I want you to get rid of them. What do you mean, bringing them here? We tried to shake them and couldn't. What do you want us to do? Let them call the cops? That senator's daughter's a sweet number. If I wasn't once crossed by a dame, I'd take her off your hands. The women are the cause of all our trouble. Now, you better get rid of them or we'll be all jammed up. Ma's right, Ben. We're playing with dynamite every minute that they're around. All right, all right. In three days, Harry and me is hopping over to Cuba. We'll leave the gal stranded in Miami. Well, I wish you were leaving tonight. Oh, stop beefing. You can stand it a few more days. Hey, besides, look at the way they've been happening around the house. Bah! Women were never a help to anybody but themselves. Hmm. You've done those bedrooms pretty fast. Did you clean your own room? Not yet. Listen, you go down the cellar and stop that washing machine. You go inside and press those suits. Not mine. I'll have the tailor pick it up. All right. Press all but the... All except the gray one.
Say, Ben, where are we going to stop when we get to Havana? You would worry about that. What worries me is how we get there. Oh, what a swell layout we had down there last year. Yeah, Marble Castle right on the ocean. You'd love that. Not me. Sounds too much like Alcatraz. Huh? I wonder what kind of a job she's doing on my suit. Well, why don't I send it out with mine? No, uh, I guess I'll take a chance. Ain't I in the gray suit, have you? It's over there. Have a look through the pockets. Oh, he's always a forgetting something. Yeah, when they opened the coat, I found it pinned on the sleeve. No, no, not written. Punched with little holes on wrapping paper. Uh, send the police, it says. Thanks. I'll talk to Ben about it. I have a pretty good idea where it came from. Two more days in this dump and I'll be crazy. I'd like to blow out of here right now. I never should have told you about that note. We've had the jitters ever since. Say, what are you going to do about teaching them dames a lesson? Between now and Sunday, we ain't going to eat more than a couple of canaries. Oh, the old stale bread and coffee cure, huh? Uh -huh. Well, after all, you can't blame them for trying. Who's that guy? I never saw him before. Oh, only a thirsty hobo. Yeah? I'm gonna find out. Hey! Come here! Come on in. 
Get away from that window. Anything we can do for you? No, I guess not. I'd just stop by for a drink of water. And maybe a bite of food. Hungry, huh? Yeah, plenty. Think you can fix them up with something? Sure. Sit down. Sit down. Thanks. Heat up that coffee. And fry up some bacon and eggs in a hurry. I can't. I just can't go in there, Ann. I'm afraid I might do something that would show them I really know, Jimmy. Pull yourself together, Dorothy. You've got to face it. Well, there was nothing else to do but hock my coat. I had to eat. That's tough. Let's see your phone ticket. I, um, I haven't got it. Where is it? Well, I sold it to another fellow. What fellow? Well, I don't know his name. Just the guy I ran across in town. Listen, brother, you ought to have your coat. Maybe I better take you back to town and get it out for you. Oh, no, I... Well, I couldn't think of letting you do that. Sure, that's just what I'll do. I'm a big-hearted guy. I like to help people who are down on their luck. Oh, but I... There you are, buddy. Hop to it. Thanks. See that our guest gets plenty to eat. Guy's a phony. I'm gonna find out. Listen, Ben, you ain't really going to town, are you? Sure. Well, you'll be taking an awful chance in broad daylight. Not as big a chance as if we turn this mug loose to tip off the cops. Well, how are you gonna handle it? Check up on that coat yarn. Not having us ticket didn't smell so good. Yeah, but what if her story don't hold up? Then we both start out on a nice little ride. Only he don't come back. Hey, Pop. Ever seen him before? I said, have you ever seen this guy before? Maybe yes, and maybe no. What is the job business? Listen, Pop. Last night? Say, you didn't steal that coat you gave me last night, did you? Oh, so he hopped the coat, huh? Yes. Uh, but I didn't know it was going to cause any trouble. Otherwise, I wouldn't have taken it. No trouble at all, Pop. Seems I had you wrong, kid. Here, get the Benny out. Good luck. Well, that's the layout, Ralph. We've got a mighty effective system down here, Johnny. Well, you look as if you've just seen a ghost. I'll never come closer to dying if I live to be 110. I'll take back that pawn ticket if you don't mind. I wouldn't part with it for the world. Why not? It just saved my life. What happened? What happened? One of the bunch brought me back to town to check on pawning that coat. <laughs> I got a big laugh when I saw Davis taking you into that hawk shop. You... What are you talking about? I was watching you. Are you kidding? Jimmy, I haven't been more than 100 yards away from you since you left here. How do you like that? And all the while I thought I had one foot in the grave. But say, was it a load off my mind when I saw Dorothy and that maid? You mean to say those girls are there too? Sure, and they were smart enough to deadpan me. Swell, we better move right in. Hey, now, wait a minute. Won't that endanger the girls? It may, but that's the way it is. John and we've got a real battle on our hands. Joy and the Turk are hiding out up there too. That makes it perfect. What are we waiting for? Well, boys, no bellhops around this hotel. We'll have to carry our own baggage. Any suggestions, Ralph? No, Johnny, this is your party. Come here, boys. Here's the layout. Ralph, you and Gus will take care of the rear of the house. This big rock here. There's your spot. Thank you, Johnny. Ed, you and Charlie will take a position on each side. Right. Jimmy, that leaves you and me to ring the front doorbell and leave our cards. Yeah, if we don't run into a hailstorm. Look, John, there's only one thing I'm afraid of. Not getting cold feet, are you, Jimmy? Well, not for myself, but... Oh, your girl? Yeah. Jimmy, there'll be plenty of time to worry about her cold feet after you're married. Let's get our
special agent. So what? Open that door, Davis. Here's my answer, copper. The music started. What are we waiting for? No, I'm going to keep them quiet now. I get it. So they come out the back way. Yeah, that's it. saying that prayers. Man, we ain't getting any fire from the back. That means I haven't got a cover from the rear. You and Joe go out the back. Keep the car going. We'll join you. Right. Seems sort of cowardly being down here. Yes, but it's awfully healthy. Look and swell. There goes a couple of them now. Yeah, then I'll be out in a minute. Where are you going? I'm going to find those girls and take care of them. They brought me all this bad luck. What about the other? Forget them. Let's go. Put some tear gas. Jimmy Dugan, they'll reverse the charges. Yeah? Copy, boy. How about Bill? Let's go to town. The G-men this afternoon captured Ben Davis and Harry Wilson, who have confessed to the slaying of Senator Benson. That's good. Yep, that's right. The killers were nabbed at the hideout of Ma Bolton after a battle which raged for more than half an hour, during which Georgia Fence, Turk Malloy, and Ma Bolton were killed. Well, naturally, your correspondent had something to do with it. And say, listen, I'm going to give you a detailed story of a pond coat that's a honey. <laughs> go on, Jimmy, go on. Ah, oh, keep your shirt on, will you? I had to get off the line for a minute so as not to burn the insulation. Who? Dorothy Benson, she's sitting right on my knee. Knee. Knee! I'll spell it for you. K as in... Uh, K as in kiss. Uh-huh. N as in uh, another kid. E as... Oh, get a dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> 